Hey guys, Brad Bodner Chuck here. Hold on one second. That's better. My face looks like I got hit by a large animal. I don't know, something. For those of you that follow me on social media, I posted the photo yesterday on Instagram and Facebook of my face, the left side of my face. I'm gonna give you guys um, a three minute story of why I look this way, what happened, and then we're gonna get to what this podcast and video is all about. So I find myself lucky enough to have time to go to the gym on, I don't know what it was, Tuesday. So Tuesday this week, I find myself at the gym working out. As you guys know right now with COVID as it is, you basically book your appointment in the gym. So I had my time. I had was doing my workout. I was lifting weights and doing some cardio and feeling good and feeling confident and, and so inspired that I was spending time on me and on my body. And I had 15 minutes left in my uh, allotted time, my appointment. So I decided that I really wanted to make this workout count. So I wanted to, to do something I hadn't done in a while, which was a weighted walk. You take a barbell or some kind of weight and you put it on your back or your front, wherever you can carry it, and you walk it around the track or you just take it for a walk. At this gym, they have a 400 meter indoor rubber track. It's actually a beautiful track. So I decided to grab a barbell. Now the barbell I picked and that I used was a shorter barbell. These are the ones that you would see on kind of the A-frame racks in your gym. They're probably about three feet long, maybe maybe four feet, probably more closer between three, three feet, three and a half feet. Anyway, that's relevant. I chose my weight, which happened to be 100 pounds. I don't mention the weight to like flex or brag because heavy is a relative term. You may think it's light. I may think it's heavy. Doesn't really matter. Put it on my back. And I walk it from the gym to the track, which is about probably 20 feet, 30 feet. And then I start down the track. I start walking down the track with this weight on my back. So I probably already look like a bit of an idiot walking on this track with uh, there's men and women out there who are, you know, some are jogging, some are walking in, in groups and talking and enjoying this space, enjoying this beautiful track. I'm walking down with this weight on my back and I realize that, wait a second, this is a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. And I was likely about halfway when I decided, okay, now it's time for me to break. So I was probably about 200 meters in of the 400 meters that I was committed to doing. So I peel off to the left, I get off of the track and I start to think, okay, now what? How do I get this weight off of my back? I admittedly hadn't thought of that really. And I thought, if anything, what I will do is simply from my back, press it up over my head, put it onto my shoulders in the front and then lower to the ground. That didn't happen. I was super fatigued. I had no energy or strength left in my shoulders or at least enough to get it up over my head. So I was really left with very few options on how to get this barbell off of my back to the ground. And I wasn't about to throw it on the ground because that just ethically is not really down. I'm not down with that. And I didn't want to potentially endanger anyone else around me or make a bunch of noise and be that guy or that person. I decide, and this is how my brain worked or works, the most logical thing I can do is take the weight and do a lunge. So I lunged with one foot, uh, one knee now on the ground. So I have one knee on the ground and I believe it was what would have been my left knee on the ground. So my right foot and right leg is still, uh, well bent, but obviously I'm not, um, both knees aren't on the ground yet. Maybe both knees on the ground would have been the play. Who knows? Hindsight 2020. I'm now in lunge position, 100 pounds on my back. My idea that I have was I'm going to tilt to the left till the uh, left side of the barbell touches the ground. And then from there, I guess I thought that from there I'll just push the uh, remaining weight off and from there the fall wouldn't have been that big with the weights maybe a foot two feet from, to the ground so i ideally it wouldn't have been that obnoxious but that didn't happen as soon as the weight touched down on the left hand side that barbell threw me forward with some of the most aggressive force that i have ever felt from behind and pinned me to the ground and when it pinned me to the ground it left me with these beautiful kisses uh, on my forehead, around my eye, as it drove my face into the rubber flooring. And I was pinned down with a barbell on my neck. I'm lucky that nothing else happened to me and I'm so grateful and thankful that, that is the case. 
that I, was, that I was able to walk away from this because, oh my gosh, it could have been way worse. So thank you to whoever was watching me over at that moment. And uh, I was actually surprised because there was people on the track that no one like, came over and said like, hey man, are you okay? Or is that what you were meaning to do? And perhaps no one said that because I actually looked like I knew what I was doing. But I can promise you that I didn't. I had no idea what I was doing. And at one point I likely feared for my life. Somehow I was able to, to muster up the energy and strength to get the bar off of my neck and then sit there for the next 30 seconds to three minutes questioning my life, why I even decided to do that. And I guess sit there and try and make my ego not hurt as much as it did. But oh my God, it was embarrassing. And oh my God, I wish I had a video. So hey, if you're watching this or listening to this podcast and you work at the Canada Games Center in Halifax, Nova Scotia and have access to any security cameras around the track, please reach out to me and I will pay you for that footage because it is something that my grandchildren should see. Anyway, that was supposed to be two minutes and that was about seven minutes. So I apologize. Let's get to why I wanted to hop on the podcast today. And it is because I want to talk about self-belief. I want to talk about how important self-belief is in this game that is life, in this game that is working to be an entrepreneur or working to achieve certain things in your life. It doesn't matter if you want to be an entrepreneur, just working to achieve something greater than what your current reality is. I know right now that what is going to push me to the next level of success is my self-belief. And I was reintroduced or I was re-energized by this idea in reading a book that I've been reading now for the probably the past uh, two months calling, uh, calling, it's not calling, called How to Get Rich by Felix Dennis. Felix Dennis was an incredible entrepreneur who no longer is with us and his likely his most uh, famous claim to fame is uh, Maxim Magazine. That was his brainchild and a magazine that he created. So he he came from a background of really nothing, but created this incredible magazine media empire. And Maxim Magazine was kind of what he hung his hat on. But the book itself isn't all about money. It's not all about greed. It's not all about that. He has some incredible information in there. And there's one chapter where he talks about self-belief. And sure, consistency is important. And sure, persistency is important. But the most important thing that you you need to achieve anything in your life, whether it's a relationship you want, a, a body you want, a mindset you want, sure, a bank account that you want, a job, whatever it is, if you have the self-belief that you can and you will, that is all you need. It makes everything else redundant. If you can sit there right now and say to yourself, I fully believe in me and mean it and actually mean it, there is nothing that will get in your way. I promise you that. So if you can touch base with and, and get in tune with, do you actually believe in you? And as I say that out loud, as I look into the camera, I realize that this is something that I've been struggling with for quite some time and I suffer admittedly from imposter syndrome. And I said this the other day to Lindsay, my partner, who I love and appreciate more than anything else in the world, where I said, I realize why I'm not achieving what I want to achieve. And she said, why? And I said, me. I'm the one that's in my way. I'm the one that's stopping me from achieving the next level of, as I determine, greatness. And she said, yeah, I've known that for a while. But for me, it was such a palpable, visceral realization that my lack in my self-belief in myself it was is what was holding me back, is what is holding me back. So I need to find a way, whether it's with a coach, more reading, or whether it's with meditation or whatever it is, I need to find a way to get in touch with my self-belief and ask myself, do I actually believe what I say I believe? Do I actually believe that I can do what I say I can do? And everything else is irrelevant. So I want you to take from this podcast, from this video here today, I want you to take this one question away. Step in front of the mirror. Hopefully you don't look like I do right now with, you know, marks all over your face and scabs on your forehead from rubber flooring. Ask yourself this, do I believe in myself? That's it. And if you don't, seek to find a way to understand why you don't. And then seek to instill that belief in yourself. And when you do, when you fully believe in you, anything is possible. When you fully believe in you, you will be consistent. You will be persistent. The self-belief is what's going to differentiate the past you from the future you. So as I hit stop record on this and stop record on the camera, what I am going to do is start working on my self-belief and taking it to the next level because I know for me to achieve and show up for those around me, I need to believe more in myself. I appreciate you guys. 
Thank you for tuning in as you do week after week. If it wasn't for you, none of this would really make sense. So thank you. You know what to do until next time. Be good and do good. Peace. Oh, and if you're at the gym, be careful with those barbells and just don't walk around a track with it on your back. Be smart. Learn from me. Learn from my mistakes. Have a great day, guys.